All right, Second Chronicles 20, closing with this. Believe it or not, it's a long closing though. <laughs> so, thank you, Carol. So extraordinary places in the corporate temple, the personal temple, extraordinary places in trouble. So Jehoshaphat, the people of God are far outnumbered. Many of you know this story. Verse 3, Jehoshaphat was alarmed by the news and sought the Lord for guidance because there was a group of armies coming against just this one people. And skipping down to verse 12, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 12. If you're there, say a big amen. Look at verse 12. They're praying, and here's what they said. Oh, our God, won't you stop them? We are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us. How many believers are like that? How many of us pray like that? We pray our problem, don't we? Oh God, I am powerless. How do you think that makes God feel? I am a Christian, but I am powerless. <laughs> oh, come on now. Oh God, this is so horrible. And it's just going to stay horrible. We pray our problem and we're like, Where's God? Why isn't He doing anything? He's just answering your prayer. You're praying your problem. How about praying something like, Oh God, you are all powerful. And because you're all powerful and I have the capacity to have you on the inside of me, the God of creativity, ingenuity, and genius. You are on the inside of me and you will make a way where there is no way. How about praying your solution? Oh God, I am looking to you in this hour because you are powerful. Oh God, you own the cattle on a thousand hills and the cattle too. And so I have a bill that I can't pay, but you can't pay it. I look to you. Mm, quit praying your problems, start praying your solution. So look at this. We do not know what to do now they, they changed at least into a right direction praying their problem but at least they admit I don't know what to do but we are looking to you for help aren't you glad God's merciful I mean they're praying their problem but at least in humility they say we don't know what to do we're looking to you for help so that's where they went right looking for to God for help so as all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones wives and children here it is, verse 14. The Spirit of the Lord came. Oh, that's what we need. Even in trouble. Trouble becomes an extraordinary place. Why? God shows up in our trouble and He turns it around to our triumph. But not only does He turn it into our triumph, He turns it into a complete trample upon the enemy. <laughs> oh, sometimes He has to allow. He doesn't do it. But he steps back and allows you to get in trouble so that you'll be stirred up in battle mode to at least do some fighting. So that while you're fighting based on your own personal need, you not only beat up on some devils that are attacking you and you're for, but you, instead of saying no more, you don't even realize it, but as you're fighting in the spirit, you start attacking devils that are beating up on other people. And God eventually wants to get you to the place that you fight all the time, not just when you're in trouble. Good preaching, come on preacher. So the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men there. His name was Jehazel. Skip down to verse 15. Look at it. He said, listen King Jehoshaphat, listen all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I can tell you that I don't have all the answers for this generation. I can tell you I don't have all the solutions. I don't know how to save them. I don't know how to keep them saved. I don't know how to deal with this economy. I don't have all the answers. But there's one thing that I do have. An incredible God. That is not only because we shortchange him. We say he's able to do the impossible. No, no, no. He will do the impossible. And he will do the impossible for a people who will dare to believe him. 
But guess what? I don't have enough spirituality within my own self to believe Him like I need to. So what do I do? Take me to your holy place. <laughs> turn this temple into an extraordinary place. And by the way, while I'm in trouble, just turn this trouble into a triumph that goes beyond my own victory, but the victory for many other people. <laughs> turn my pain into a gain for not only myself, but for a world of people that are also going through the pain that I've come through. I'm trying to tell you the worst pain in your life is probably your calling. You've been abused, you've been addicted, you've been hurt. That's probably your calling. Get in the secret place, connect to the mind of Christ and go for it. He'll make you smarter than you really are. He's a genius. He'll make you look like one even though you're not. I'm just not that smart. But he is. He is. I really believe in all, all with all of my heart. And I say this with humility, but yet without false humility. The Lord didn't make me sick, but I went through two and a half years of battling illness because it was God's time to release me in a healing miracle ministry. I believe that with all of my heart. I say, well, you're just uh, no, 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 I'm just confident in God. And so God allows you to go through some of the greatest pain in your life so that He can bring the greatest gain. But we will not even, verse 17, need to fight. Take your position, stand still. There's a word for some of you. Stand still. Sometimes the knee-jerk reaction is try to do something. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Sometimes it's not you doing anything except waiting on the Lord. And watch the Lord's victory. Whose victory? The Lord's. He is with you. Oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out there tomorrow. See, sometimes the problem. We got to show up for battle and just stand still and watch Him do His victory. But you can't hide out in the corner in the fetal position and and say, I am powerless. Show up. You are all powerful. And so we are all powerful. Because we are a team. And you're all my team. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed his face to the ground. All the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Now watch this. This is the last part. This is... The third and final closing. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud shout. There's where some of you are going to have trouble with heaven. There will be times of quietness, but there will be seasons of shouting. Shouting makes you nervous down here. You're going to... My Lord, when you get to heaven. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out to the wilderness of Tekoa on the way Jehoshaphat stopped and said listen to me all you people of Ju Judah Jerusalem before believe in the Lord your God and believe in his prophets and you will succeed after consulting the leaders of the people the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army singing to the Lord and praising him for from his holy splendor watch this this is what they say give thanks to the Lord his faithful love endures forever I had to close with that because I need you to see there really is something to worship. There really, 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 really is something to singing and praising. It's not about whether it's a hymn that's a hundred years old or a chorus that's two weeks old. It's really not about the style or anything about that. It's about the message. It really is. And so as we sing unto the Lord songs both that have been written through... The, the ingenuity and genius of Christ that he's given people down through the ages because there are solemnists both in the scripture and then there are modern day solemnists that, that wrote things like blessed assurance and, and, and amazing grace and incredible hymns and then there are solemnists who are still writing new songs today and they're based on the word of God and they're all come from the genius and ingenuity of God and they help bring us, our worship brings us into extraordinary places. 
and releases the power and, and, and the army of heaven into our trouble, into our battles. And so sometimes it's a song that's been written by, by somebody who tapped into the ingenuity and genius of God and they're like, I wasn't smart enough to come up with that. I mean, who was really smart enough to come up with amazing grace? I tell you who, the Holy Spirit. The ingenuity of Christ. And so, or it's a new song that nobody's ever heard. I'm just singing from my spirit. Maybe it's not even a song. I'm just praising Him with words. But I'm telling you, if you don't learn, if you do not learn to be a worshiper, you are, you are, you are holding yourself back from levels that you could go to. Amen. Amen. The reason some of you can't pray longer than five minutes is if you haven't learned to be a worshiper. How do I learn to be a worship? Start practicing. Start in church, but then continue at home. <clears throat> you can't sing? Hey, listen, I sound really good when I sing along with people that really can sing. <laughs> Turn the tape off? Horrible. Oh, Jesus. No tune in the bucket. Help me, help me, help me. But they're singing, oh, I sound beautiful, because they just, I turn up loud, they drown me out. Woo, yeah. Sound like an angel Jesus. Come on. How do I learn the word? You know, I can't do that. I pray like two minutes and I don't have anything else to say. You haven't learned to be a worshiper. How do I learn to worship? Practice. And all of a sudden when you start singing and God takes you, that's what happens. So, so he puts the worshipers out front. It's a principle of God's word. It's a mighty weapon. Praise is. And so they don't even have to pull out their guns. They don't have to pull out their swords. They don't have to pull out their slingshots. Whatever it is they have. They didn't have to pull it out. They just sing. And the Bible says the whole army's against them. They were far outnumbered. They become in confusion. Turn on one another and kill each other. And it's like a total annihilation. And their problem, their pain turned into gain for a whole lot of people. That's what God wants to do for us. But we've got to learn to be worshipers. You know, it takes a whole lot more of your brain power to complain than it does to worship. <laughs> it does. I mean, you really, you got to work a little bit harder. But if you'll just praise Him. Now, I understand we all have... We all have problems and situations and there's nothing wrong with talking about that. But at the end of the day, let's be people who worship Him. And as we do, He comes to meet with us in His presence. We just stand all over the room.